All right, this is actually the third time I've tried to record this because I keep having these weird problems. The book this week is Weather and Illustrated History by these folks. You might want to look at that, maybe this part two, and try to come up with a question for it. Like, I don't know, is this book just going to be about the history of weather or the history of our understanding of weather? I don't know. Take a look at the back because we always work from the outside in. You can see that there's an award-winning environmental journalist and a science educator. And they have a list of some fun things that are on here. You might want to take a look at the cover of the book. Wait, what the heck is going on with this giant circle, etc., etc. Take a look at the inside. You can see that ooh, Mary Tigner Rassen. And thank you, Mary. Give us this book. Yours. Take a look at the end, and you will see that, you know, there's some other stuff going on. But actually, what is this? You should try to figure this out, maybe. Or not. It's fine. Right? The whole point of this is to get kind of interested. Um, a lot of praise from this from some people. Who, I want to joke and say, who should know better? But these are like really like Nathaniel Philbrick, uh, Alan Alda's famous Charles Mann. It's like one of my personal heroes for this. You can see that it's dedicated to their kids. The table of contents is like no table of contents I've ever seen otherwise. It starts with years. Um, and the first one is 4.567 billion BCE. And the last one is 100,000 years in the future. So that's a thing that you can know about. Um, there's an introduction right here. Acknowledgements. Okay, starts with Earth gets an atmosphere. Let's go to the end because we technically tend to read from the outside in. There are stuff in the index. You can kind of browse through there. El Nino, the weight of the atmosphere. Oh, that sounds like Torricelli. There's some stuff here about references. There are some contributors, and you see that actually this book was not just written by these two people, but by a whole team of people who probably specialize in things. Okay, now I'm into the end of the Ice Ages, which might happen, oops, wrong way, which might happen 100,000 years, minus four years ago. Uh, and then you can just kind of poke around here and see what you think of all of these things. The jet stream becomes a weapon. Ooh, that's really good. Or, ooh, this attractive woman from the 1950s telling you, I have an air conditioning unit and you can do. You should get one. It's not nice. Of course, photographs of tornadoes. Storm chasing gets scientific. Ooh, that's kind of fun. More tornadoes, probably. Watching weather from orbit. Ooh. Ah, the Great Blue Norther. Hurricane hunters. Yeah. The joy, Midwest firestorms. The joy of something like this. It's not like some of the other books that has, like, one idea and they help you understand it. This is a tasting of a whole bunch of things that are only barely connected to each other. But that's great because the topic of weather and wind and whatnot is a bunch of things that are barely connected to each other. Here's our Torricelli. Sorry, is this Torricelli? No, this is, sorry, this is Galileo. Sorry. Galileo student Torricelli. I bet we'll get the next one in here. Ah, yeah, here we go. The weight of the atmosphere. Well, you've heard about this guy before. I like you. Barometer. Yes. So, you know, just kind of poke around here, have a fun time with it or not. Ooh, Aristotle. Enjoy. Happy reading.